Fox. Welcome back to the Fox Robbins Business Show. Come on in, uh, have a seat, relax. We're going to talk about small business. Of course, that's uh, the Fox Robbins Business Show is everything and anything whatsoever, you name it, about small business. We'll touch on it. You're going to start one. You're going to make one grow. You're going to get one out of trouble. You're going to acquire your competitor. You're going to go into, uh, you know, overseas trade, whatever you're going to do. But today we're going to talk about the end game, which is selling the business. The exit strategy. And this is episode number two of, of, uh, of two episodes with Tom Gladhill, who is going to, uh, uh, he's an expert on, preparing a business for sale and selling it. He's an author, by the way, so we know this guy is, uh, is a serious. It's his second <laughs> book. Uh, value Driver System, here it is. Uh, and this is about a, a, a proven system to help small business owners be part of the only 25% because Tom says that it's a remarkable uh, statistic, but only 25 uh, businesses are successful in getting sold, uh, sold properly, or sold at all, in fact, right? That's right. And uh, so uh, we, we already had, we already uh, got in uh, deeply into this topic in episode number one. This is we're going to follow up and uh, and give you some more detail and background. I'm uh, Bill Fox, the co-host, but the other co-host, this guy, you got to keep an eye on this guy. Listen to this, Tommy. You won't believe it. He's a he's a he's amazing. He's uh, wireless, so he's mobile, wireless, <laughs> and astounding, and he is Coach Robbins. And I exist only in Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, we already were talking with, uh, with Tom yeah. about uh, you know, uh, uh, recognizing all the factors involved yep. in selling a business. Uh, every bit as much uh, difficult and, uh, as uh, starting one up in the first place. Yeah, it can be because, uh, you know, people usually start a business, they, like we've said so many times, they have a technical skill, they want to start their own business, they go ahead and do it, they know what they're doing, uh, you know, maybe they've involved, hopefully they're involved with a particular industry, and they start and they grow their business, and, you know, 25, 30 years later, they're ready to retire, and as Tommy said in the first episode, the, the majority of their worth is tied up in the business, so if you can't take the time and prepare it properly for sale for the most money, you're leaving, as you said in show number one, a lot of money on the table. And that's what this show is about. And that's what Tom's book is about. And that's what the website is about, which we'll go to at the end of the show, to show the business owner how to prepare to sell the business and get the most value out of the business. Yeah. And uh, Tom, yes, uh, in this session, uh, you're going to talk about what drives value in the business. Who are who are the business buyers? Uh, recognizing, you know, the uh, uh, likelihood likely uh, business buyers matching a company with the buyer type and developing a plan. So let's uh, move into the um, value drivers. And you uh, tell us you div divided that into sixteen uh, and four and four major categories. The first of which is the uh, value drivers in business foundation, so tell us about that. Yeah, the, uh, the foundation drivers, uh, Bill, are broken down into the industry that you're in, uh, the product, the services that you, that you actually sell in order to get revenue, and the company that you have, and the competition. Now, with the industry, that's in incredibly important because the industry's come and gone. You know, you don't want to be in the stagecoach industry now. Buggy whips. Yeah, you know, buggy, buggy whips, whips yep. you know, and there are other industries that are because of the digital age that are decreasing in, in, uh, in nature, like mm -hmm. the printing industry, or yep. newspapers or whatever. Right. right. But there are some that are really hot. And growing. And the hottest right now is probably software uh, as a service, mm -hmm. you know, software in the cloud, yep. uh, especially if you're talking about compliance, right? All right, uh, that's a very hot industry right yep. now. So that makes, but there are things you can do, even if you're in an industry and you don't want to, you can't get out of that industry. There are still things you can do within that industry, right? All right? Uh, your product and services, you know, there are 
but very important, obviously, because that's how you get your, your, right. your revenue. Right. All right. That's how you make a living. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to watch that. You right. have to compare it to the competition. You have to improve it. Mm -hmm. You have to change it. If you have, you know, if you need to change it, modify it. You got to pivot. And, we call you it. You got to do that. You got to pivot. Right. Yep. Your company basically is what how people perceive your company. Brand value. Right? Brand. It's all perception. It's your brand. It's your reputation. Right. Uh, you know, it's your relationship with your customers. Yep. It's all those kinds <coughs> of things. And the competition. Uh, you know, if there is no competition, you're probably not in the right business. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. yeah. There's always competition. Sure. Uh, and, but you've got to know what your competition is. You've got to, you know, know the intensity of the competition, the, uh, the amount of the competition. The rivalry, we call the, it. The rivalry that yep. goes on. So uh, that's a whole another. Your next category uh, of the value drivers is uh, called must have. What is that? Tell us, tell us about that. What do you have to have? Well, you've you got to have people, obviously. <laughs> yeah, employees. Um, but your personnel, is, and you've got to have cash flow, <laughs> and you've got to have some systems. Yep. You know, and uh, you have to have growth, hmm. all right? Now, your, your personnel is that really, really critical. Hmm. Having good people, you know, key employees, um, if you have that, you can work on your company, as you said, Coach. Right. Uh, Instead of in your company, right? Uh, you can go on. You have business-free vacations mm -hmm. without people pounding you, right? You know, typically your small business right now, the small business owner, is putting out fires. He's, you know, he's he's just day-to-day -day operations are just drowning him, right? Okay, everything's uh, an emergency, right? All exactly. day long, right? Yep. Uh, cash flow, you know, critical. Not only is it part of the valuation equation, but it's, it's, it's what gives you the money to pay your employees. Right, pay your you suppliers, and, and you grow your company. And grow your company, right. yeah. So See, it isn't we, just cash, it's cash flow, guys. And the coaches said this, uh, uh, like cash flow is everything. Cash flow is life itself. Absolutely. Cash flow is more important than your mother. CFI, M-I-T-Y-M. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's where's it coming from, how much. And when. And when, W-H-E-N, uh, and when is probably the most important of the, well, well that's not true. But well, it's, it's as important as how much is coming in because I, I've narrowed it down to two simple phrases. You got your gazintas, you got your gazautas, and you got to get the gazintas before you can shell out the gazautas. It's just that simple. And they have to be enough gazintas to cover all the gazautas. You got to go out. So, I mean, I'm a financial genius. So, cash flow, you, Tom, you got to have systems and you got to have growth. What about that? Well, if, if, you're, if you're not growing, you're obviously going in the wrong direction. There's no such thing as standing still. You're either growing or shrinking, right? Well, the first thing that a, a uh, business buyer will look at yep. is the company growing. Over the last okay. three years, particularly. Over the last three years, yep. yeah. The uh, next set of, uh, of value drivers, your next set of four, are called uh, stabilizers. Yeah, stabilizers basically, uh, you know, they provide stability. Right. Uh, your customer base, hmm. you know, your, one of the things, the main problem with, with your customer base is what we call customer concentration. Mm. If you only have one or two customers, Ooh. if you only have one customer, you don't really have a business. You You're an really employee of that bigger company. They own you. You know, I, I knew uh, a, a person who had one, one customer, and mm. it was the United States Army, mm. all right? And he was doing five million a year with, that, mm. with the Army. Yep. The Army decided they didn't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a business anymore. That's right, it was right. gone. So that really affects customer, uh, the value of the company. Well, even if, if I were looking at a company to buy, if I were crazy enough to want to do that again at this stage of my life, and I'm looking at a company, and you I are. see, I you probably, probably am, <laughs> I, if the right deal comes along, but I can guarantee you if I'm looking at their financial statements and I see that one of their customers represents 40% of their business, I'm really leery about buying that. Oh, yeah. I don't like any one customer, quite frankly, 
to represent over 10% of the business. Yeah. Because I figure if I buy the business and they're crazy and they don't love me too, you know, <laughs> and I lose them, well, I've still got 90% of the business. Yeah. Well, you want customers that are not one and done. That's right. You want customers that repeat. Return. Loyal repeat. customers. It's 10 times more repeat. expensive to get a customer in the door than it is to keep the customer. So you want loyal evangelists, customers that are raving about how wonderful it is to do business with exactly. you. Exactly. They're my free salespeople out there. Yep. Absolutely. And exactly. your your financials, your suppliers and your lease, what yeah, about that? It, well, your financials, if a, if a business buyer walks in and asks for the financials and they're not available, mm. he said, well, gee, I'll have to call my accountant or whatever, you know. Yeah. If, you're, if you don't have good access to your financials, that throws a red flag up you know, that there access. might be a problem <laughs> right yeah. okay and you also want them to be uh standard financials sure you don't mm -hmm. want you don't want somebody and i've had people that have come up with these excel spreadsheets mm -hmm. that they've had financial information you know based on on what they wanted and that's great mm. but your, your bankers don't want that and but business buyers they want standard accounting format Right. right. They right. want an income statement they're used to looking at. They want a balance sheet they're used to looking at. Yep. And they want a cash flow statement they're used to looking exactly. at. Those three are the important yeah. exactly. financial yep. statements. Yep. And what about suppliers and your and lease? What's what do you what's on your mind there? Well, suppliers suppliers can make a big difference, especially if, if uh, you know, you want them to be local, mm -hmm. okay? Because you don't want tremendous <coughs> delays and freight mm. charges, right. all right? You want them to be dependable, right. all right? That's if they say they're going to deliver on a certain date, you want them to deliver on a certain mm. date, all right? And if, if they've been in business for a while mm. and they're familiar with the industry, mm. they can lead you to hot products. Right. They, they, and also, can, they can get you through the tough times. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you're having a cash flow problem and you have a good relationship with your yep. supplier, right. you know, They'll understand. Just call the supplier yeah. up and say, look it, I just got a big sale here, but I'm not going to be able to discount this bill. Can you give me 30 days extra? Can, you, can I pay it a third and third and still take the discount? And they want the business, they, pro they might say yes. Exactly. If you ask. Exactly. Right. The lease is, uh, <coughs> you know, that's something that as you go up the business pyramid that they're probably not as interested in, but the small businesses. I have actually had people have deals go south at the closing table because of a lease. The lack of a right. continuous lease that's, I had a liquor store that was uh, being bought by my client mm -hmm. and my advice was for the client to walk away because the liquor store had one more year left on the lease and I said go check out what the lease is going to cost you over the next five years and it was like double. They were going to double the lease and that put the business at a totally different value. He wasn't going into business to take care of the landlord. He was supposed to be buying the business to take care of himself. He walked away from the deal at my advice because yeah. I would have walked away from it too. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem to be important, but it is. It is yeah. because it's money it out. It's, yeah. it's money you're laying out. Now, if you got seven years left on a lease and the current market value is 18 bucks a foot and you've got it for seven bucks a foot, that might be an asset. That's right. That might be something That's I'm right. interested to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be saving eight bucks a foot here for the next seven years. This is something I'm even more interested in. Thank yep. you very much. That's favorable to me as a buyer yep. and a seller. Now you've got something that, uh, that you label <clears throat> in your book as the big hitters. The scalability, bankability, recurring revenues, and intellectual assets. What what's on your mind here? Th these are <clears throat> these are incredible value boosters. Yes. Okay, <laughs> uh, scalability is the ability for a business to grow right. without putting a tremendous amount of money into the company. Right. Exactly. Right. Is, which is why, in a few slides ago, we said we're looking for a business that's been growing for the last three years. And one well, that's going to be growing for the next whatever number of years. That's right. Scalability. scalability. And maybe we yep. can grow it exponentially yep. because the market's going crazy. Oh, great. I, I, had, a, and I had a client <coughs> a few years ago. They, um, they started out with two people. Mm. In their first year, they did $250,000 in business. A few years later, they were doing $8 million in business with the same two people. <laughs> Not bad. They had outsourced everything. That's okay. Except 
their core competency. Or never outsource a core competency, exactly. right. Keep that in-house, but outsource the payroll and outsource, those, those are but incidental. That, that, that's scalable. That's right, <laughs> that's, that's scalable. scalability. And bankability. Bankability, the, the ability <coughs> to get loans and have the company, you know, be, have that bank, of, have that bankability, have right. the ability to go out and get a loan because the business buyer is going to count on the bankability of the company right. for a loan. Right. Because, you know, he's, where's he going to get the money to buy the company? He's going to, he's going to need a loan. He's, he's not going to put up cash for the company. You know, a business buyer is going to look at the business and say, well, you know, it's going to cost me half a million dollars. All right, I'm going to put up 150000 on my cash. I need to borrow 350000 right. Does that business support, do their financial records support, because this is what I have to show the bank. Here's what they've done the last three years. Here's my, my projections for the first year by month in the next three years. And you can see, Mr. Banker, that I am going to easily be able to pay you back. That's what the bank wants right. to know, and that's what the financial statements have yeah. to show them, and particularly the tax returns, not yeah. just the financial statements. And that's, that's the bankability. <coughs> absolutely. And recurring, recurring revenues? Recurring become. revenues is huge. Yeah. It's hu absolutely huge. It's contracts that, yep. you, that you can count on, right. the money that you can count on. Yep. Mm -hmm. you know, if you've got money coming, on, coming in from last year, you don't have to worry about working your tail off just to meet what you did last year. Right. Okay. You've got that money coming in mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's an incredible enticement to a business owner mm. to buy it. And it just, it, it increases the value of a company. Okay. Now, intellectual property, uh, you know, that's something that is a major selling point for the big companies. Mm. All right. But it, the small companies kept intellectual property too. Sure they do. It doesn't have to be a thing, mm. you know, it can be a process. Sure. Okay. Yep. What you need to do if you have a process that's unique, you should document it, all right, and make sure that it's that it's uh, you know visible to any buyers. Mm -hmm. But you can have you can have patents, you can have Secret, trademarks, Secret copyrights. Sauce. Sure. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, incredibly, there you it's incredibly important. There's a guy, a buyer on TV, which I watched the show. It's a pretty good show. Marcus Lemonis, mm -hmm. the uh, prophet, F-I-E-T, not P-H-E-T, the prophet, meaning i got to make money. And he looks at people, product, process. Those are the three P's he's always looking yeah. at. It's a good show. It's coming back on the air, as a matter of fact. Okay, we're going to review with you your... Uh, value drivers, we go back to the top of your list, which is the industry. Yeah, there, Bill, there are, there are components to each one of these value drivers mm. that you can dig down deeper mm -hmm. into each one of the value drivers. And, uh, and basically what the book does, it rates, you can rate the components. Mm. So you not only rate the value driver, but you can rate the components of it. Mm. So you add up the total of the of the uh, value of each one mm -hmm. of the components to yep. get the total for the value driver. Right. So you're giving that, uh, uh, the, uh, the industry component, you're giving that any, anywhere from zero to 10 as a rating. Right, that's just one way but of doing it. You're gonna, be, you're gonna be building on these ratings so we, get a, we end up with a total score. You end up with a total. Yeah, sure. yeah. Now with, with industry, um, you know, we talked briefly about some of these things. Industry trend is incredibly important. Mm. You know, is, is it trending up or is it trending down? Right. All right. Yep. And that's, that's very important. Trending up is good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the size of the industry, mm. you know, do yep. you, is there, are there enough customers for you that, that don't use your product <laughs> or even a, a, a similar product? Uh, or do you have to steal from your competition mm. in order to... Right. You know, to increase your sales. Mm. Um, regulations. Yeah. You know, if there are regulations for an industry, you know, that really, that really uh, inhibits um, innovation. Mm. All right. And it also, you know, increases the paperwork you have to do if, there, you know, if there's too much regulation within right. an industry. Right. All right. Now, the economic trends. Um, you take, you know, you know, financial services industry, you mm. know, when the, when the stock market goes down, financial, 
the industry goes down tremendously. Right. Okay. Stock market goes down 10%. That goes down 20%. Right. All right. But you take something like healthcare. You know, that doesn't go down. Mm -hmm. In fact, it might even go up a little bit during, yep. during yeah. bad times. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So. Uh, okay. And a, uh, a value driver, the company itself, uh, maturity, brand, reputation, industry rating. What do you got? And uh, yeah, the, here again, what, this is the rating system of, from zero to zero 10, to 10, 10 on being. the strength of the company. So right. <coughs> tell us about this well, maturity brand reputation. Yeah, but maturity, you know, obviously a company that's, you know, five years is kind of a time for a new startup. So if yeah. they make it past five years, they're yeah. probably going to make it to 10. Right. But if they don't make it, uh, it's usually the first five years. So Those are the, the maturity of a company affects their value. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know? Sure, a company's been around for 20 years, you know, it's probably going to be around for a while now, right. if all the other values are in line too. But gee, you feel much better about a company that you're looking at that's been in business for 22 years than you do looking at one that's been in business for three years. 22 exactly. months. 22 <laughs> months, right, yeah. Now your branding is important too, you yeah. know, do your potential customers know about you? Yeah. All right. right. So the brand is important. Uh, your reputation. You know, you can have a good reputation or a bad reputation, mm -hmm. but it's, 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 if you want to, you know, it, it affects your value if you have a bad reputation, and sure it enhances does. your value if you have a good reputation. So we're going to put a rating on this, but this could be, uh, uh, you could hurt the owner's uh, uh, feelings, right, if you, if you put a, uh, a poor rating on this, couldn't you? I mean, you're, you, the business broker. Well, we, uh, the, the well, I'm not going to be doing it. The business owner is going to be rating his own company. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's the, the, the key here for this whole thing, is that the business owner be objective. Right. right. Brutally objective. Honest right. with yourself. Yeah, because if he's kidding, he's only kidding himself. That's right. All right. So the business owner is going to be making, he's going to be doing the rating. You're going to teach mm -hmm. the owner to do this. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Well, they can, you know, they can do it. They just have to be objective. And they, they have to be objective. Totally objective. They have to be guided on exactly how to go about this. And that, that's what and this is all about. And they have to be objective on this. The uh, uh, products, if the company has, uh, you know, a product, if it has a service or it has a combination of products and mm. services, there's an acceptance, competition, profit margin. Yeah, the uh, acceptance... They, they really need a way of, of, uh, of valuing that, of, mm. of uh, getting a handle on the acceptance. What, what, what I used to do, we used to send out a survey, you know, of, uh, you know, how do you feel about these different things right. related to the product? And then we follow it up with a phone call, mm. all right? right? So we get a feel for the acceptance. <coughs> how are we doing? Right. What do we need to change? Right. All right. Uh, you know, the competition, how do you rate vis-a-vis -vis the competition? Mm. You know, you've always got to have a handle on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to, we used to leapfrog our competition and they used to leapfrog us. Mm. You know, we'd be giving a, a presentation for somebody and they'd say, well, do you have this? And if we said no, the well, competition, competition does. does. <laughs> then we'd race home and <coughs> we'd implement We gotta that, catch up. And then we'd leapfrog them. Exactly. <laughs> okay. It's so called, you've, you've got to constantly yeah. You know, know what the competition is called doing. hyper competition. <laughs> you move ahead. I'm your competitor. I see you moving ahead. I'm going to catch up with you, and then I want to pass you. And now you got to yeah. leapfrog me, right? Exactly. Hyper competition. Now, who who benefits from that? The customer. customer. Yeah. The customer. Right. Right. Uh, your profit margin is critical for your products. Yeah. You know, if you've got three or four products and you have one, who uh, the profit margin, you know, mm. isn't what it is, or maybe even you're losing money on it, mm. you really should phase it out. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, you really should phase it out. Yep. But profit margin is, is critical. Mm -hmm. And the service, you know, the ser and this isn't a service, this is the service of your product, not a separate right. thing that you sell. Right. Mm -hmm. But how it be selling, some products don't require any service, mm. okay? Right. Others require a lot of, a lot service, of service and support. Right. So that's a critical part yeah. of your product. And there's uh, additional factors <laughs> associated with product or ser products and or services, which is uh, uh, demand, update, uh, unprofitability, if, that's, uh, if that Ooh. exists, and uh, yeah. training. 
Yep. So yeah. tell, tell it, Tom, tell us about that. Well, demand, you've, you've got to have the demand for your product. If there's no demand for your product, you know, why should you have it? And, why be in business? But, but you might have had a demand at one time, and that demand has decreased over time. Right. So you've got to keep a handle on that. Right. Uh, and you need to update it. I mean, we talked a little bit about that. You, you, you should really get feedback from your customers, and you should get feedback from your competition. Right. All right? Yeah. And you ought to continually update your product. You better you continually be, improve it. Better be looking at your competition and know as much about that company as you can too. You have to. Because I'm, I want to know how I can defeat them. Yeah. And if I don't know who they are, I can't possibly figure out how I can leapfrog them, if you will. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Now, on, we talked about unprofitable. If you have an <coughs> unprofitable uh, product, uh, mm. then you you either got to improve it to make it increase its demand right. and, uh, and increase the profit margin. Mm. Okay. And training, uh, training is, an, uh, is a, another thing we kind of hinted at. Um, some products you can put out there without any training. Right. Others mm. require, and we sold a software product that required a lot of training. Yeah, so customer had to put a lot of skin in the game is the expression we use, yep. right. Yeah. But yep. the training was an integral part sure. of the product. What you sure. were selling. Right. Yep. And are you any good at it? Right. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what we're going to, uh, we were going to do our, uh, our show with you when, in two episodes. We're going to, we're going to need some more, a little more time to finish. So we'll go to, we'll go to three, okay. if that's okay with you. Sure. Can you hang in with us? I can. Okay. We're on products and services. There's so much to, uh, to cover here, but we've got uh, additional data. Uh, you know, from Tom's, uh, Tom, again, is the author of Value Driver System, and we're going through that system with Keir so that owners can do this themselves. Uh, you know what? You've never mentioned who he acknowledges in this book. Oh, who, who's, who did he acknowledge? Let's see. Oh Some guy named... Cliff Robbins. Oh, Look is at that, that you? Oh, that's me. Is, is that, that you? Or is that, that the coach? That the, is that <laughs> coach. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> I kid. Go we'll, ahead. We'll go on to, uh, we'll do another episode to make sure we cover all of uh, this material with Tom. It's very, really, it's very vital to business owners. Uh, this is the Fox Robbins Business Show. Uh, and uh, you, uh, all of our shows are, are uploaded to YouTube. So you can simply go to YouTube up at the search box at the top of the uh, home screen, uh, type in one single word, Fox Robbins, F-O-X-R-O-B-B-I-N-S, Fox Robbins, and click on that and you get a whole library, which will include uh, the episodes with uh, Tom Gladhill and, and the uh, uh, preparing a business for sale, as well as other episodes that, that may be of interest to you. And thank you, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>